and I work with the Rural Employment Service with West Limerick Resources. I also love to bake and cook in my spare time. So my daughter Izzy here and I are just going to go through some very simple recipes that you can do at home. Just something different to try. They are super, super easy. This episode we've actually just concentrated on doing things with three ingredients so you couldn't be easier. We're also trying to eliminate measures and weights as much as we can so it's just about getting in there and having a bit of fun. First two jobs in the kitchen are always tie the hair back or cover it up and second job is always always wash your hands. Now so we're just going to give our hands a very quick rinse. Clean hands are super super important in the kitchen and especially at the moment with the whole COVID-19 situation so always always be very careful about that. So our first recipe are actually spicy apple chips and they are really really easy they're a great way to use up old apples in the the fruit bowl and actually even old pears do you know sometimes you buy a bag of pears and there's a few that are as hard as rocks and taste awful this is a great way to use these up and not let them go to waste they actually taste better like this um, they, they improve in taste so to start off with our, our, our chips what we do is we get a couple of apples or the pears now if you have a fancy mandolin like this you're sorted but if you do not don't worry a good old-fashioned potato peeler is just as good uh, the side of a box grater works we've tried it with that they're a bit messy but it kind of works yeah and we also you could use if as a last resort if you're confident a very sharp knife and try and cut your slices as thin as you possibly can so myself and is are going to get started is going to use the veggie peeler and I'm going to use my fancy fancy mandolin. This makes them look really fancy and designery, but like I said, it's wicked sharp, so always, always use your hand guard, otherwise you lose like four fingers. So, oh, your chips are looking good, Fizz. So we're just gonna lay them out on our disc here. Now, I've got a baking tray. I've lined it with greaseproof paper. If you don't have greaseproof paper, don't worry it actually works really well without it it's just it's handy to have the greaseproof paper uh, if you have it so we're going to lay our apple chips out and now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our other two ingredients sugar i've got caster sugar you could just as easily use ordinary table sugar granulated sugar and cinnamon that's about 70 cents a jar in Tesco, Little Aldi, wherever you shop. The, the own brand is perfectly fine. A jar of this lasts literally years because you use so little of it because it's so strong. So all, it's a great thing to have and it enhances the flavour of a lot of fruits like apples, pears, different things like that. So what we're do, going to do is we're going to get our bowl and is when you put a big spoon of the caster sugar in and a teaspoon of the cinnamon sugar in, cinnamon in and we're going to make a cinnamon sugar. that in perfect now we're going to give it a good mix fizz and now we're going to very lightly sprinkle the cinnamon sugar in an even layer over the apple chips now in the meantime we've also just before we started, we preheated the oven to about 120, 130 degrees, so really quite low, so it won't take long to heat up at all. So I'm gonna take some and you take some. And uh, we're gonna sprinkle our sugar up all over the apples. We're gonna make them nice and evenly coated in our cinnamon sugar. And actually they look really pretty when they're cut thin because you can see the little flower shape in the center and it's perfectly fine to eat the great thing about this is you don't have to worry about the core you don't have to worry about the pits you don't have to worry about anything at all yeah you want to go ahead perfect so we're going to pop these into our preheated oven like i said 120 130 degrees and we're going to cook those for about 40 to 45 minutes 
but until they're really, really, they actually crisp up and dehydrate. And they come out. These were some we prepared earlier. They come out like this, like little crisp discs. And they're actually really crispy and crunchy and delicious. And they're actually a really lovely treat for a change. Lovely. Really, really nice. And they're so easy to make. You can't go wrong with them. And they're just a load of fun. So that's our crispy apple discs. And it's just nice to have them for something a little bit different. Our next three ingredient meal, we're actually going to go the opposite way and we're going to go savoury. And we're going to make cheesy cheddar biscuits. And again, they only need three ingredients. We're going to use some butter. You can use baking butter, stork, real butter, whatever you have in your fridge. A little bit of plain flour and some dry cheese. Now what I mean by dry cheese is things like cheddar cheese or any cheese that you have left over in your fridge. Sometimes what you find in the corner of your fridge is a little bit of cheese that's actually gone quite dry and hard because it's been open and it's been sitting there. That actually works really well in this recipe and it's actually a great way to use it up. And again, if you don't have a weighing scales or measures or anything like that, you can actually go the American style and go cups. Now the key with cups is you use the same size cup for each ingredient so that you're not using, so if you're using a massive cup, use a massive cup for all three ingredients. And if you're using a small cup, you use a small cup for all three ingredients. So we're going to go to use a small cup. Ingredient number one, actually, will you grab a fork there, Fizz? Is our plain flour. And we're actually just going to fill our cup right up to the top. And will you pop that in there, Is? Yep. Now, sometimes recipes ask for you to whisk or aerate or, or sieve your flour to kind of make it lighter, and it does make a difference, but not everybody has a sieve. But what you might have is a whisk. And if you whisk your flour, it has the same effect as if you had a sieve. And if you don't have a whisk, ta -da, use a fork. And a fork does the very same thing. So it's actually really simple just to get that lovely air into your biscuits or into your flour before you prepare it. Now, we already have some grated butter and we used a very cold grater uh, and very cold butter. Try and take it, wait until the last minute to take it out of your fridge. Will you grate a little bit more butter, Fizz? Into that bowl, actually into that bowl there. So we're just going to pop that all into the mug here. Yep. And we're just going to see, does this fill the mug up too? We don't have to pack it down tight. We can actually use that bit there. Is. And will you start grating our cheese as well, actually? Yep. So we filled our mug up with, with butter. We filled kind of three quarters of the way up, just the same length as the butter, as the flour did. And now we're going to do the very same thing with our cheese. So it's a really, really simple way to kind of put everything together. It's really hard cheese. <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah. You can use a mixture of cheeses. You don't have to just use the same one. Do you want to use a little bit of this actually as well, just to make things a little bit lighter? Will we see how we're going with our mug? Yep. See, we're getting close to filling that. We might need a little bit more, I'd say. Oh, we might. No, we're doing good. Okay. Perfect. I'll pop that back. What you're going to do now for me is we're going to pop the, our cheese into the bowl. So it's just cheese, butter, flour, all three quarters of the way up the mug. Now you're going to work it like you do your apple crumble. You're going to mix it together and kind of crumble it together. Douse them all in the flour, makes it a little bit easier. And you're going to work that 
and you're going to bring it together and bring it together and bring it together until it kind of forms a doughy ball. And that will take a few minutes. And it'll come all together. And while Lizzie's working away on that, like my little slave, I'm going to show you one that I prepared earlier. So it kind of came together. Again, don't worry about not having a rolling pin. You just get it. It's kind of it's quite soft and mushy and crumbly when you first finish it. And um, just put it into some cling film, roll it up in the cling film, and then pop it into your fridge. Half an hour is plenty of time. And um, if you've longer, great. But don't worry if you don't. And then you take it out when you're ready to cook it. This actually the temperature of the oven where it is with the apples at the moment is actually the ideal temperature for your cookies as well, your cheddar cheese cookies. They about 130, 140. These actually, like the apples, cook slow and low. These only take about 20 minutes, but they cook lovely and low and slow, and they just they actually just really go quite light golden and they're delicious. They're lovely on their own, you don't need to do anything with them. Um but they're actually really nice with a little bit of butter or some fruit. I mean, they are such a tasty treat. So it's lovely and solid now because it's been in the fridge. And we're going to cut it into thin little biscuits. As thin as you can. And again, we're going to pop them on a baking sheet when I'm, going to, when I'm ready. Again, if you have baking paper, brilliant. Put, lay a little bit of baking paper on the bottom of your baking sheet. If you don't, don't worry. With these, actually, if you sprinkle a little bit of flour onto the baking tray, it works, it kind of almost as a non-stick agent as well, so it works really well. So, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna use a little bit of my baking paper. It's noisy and crinkly. And to make sure your baking paper goes into every corner, you crinkle it up. tray and you lay your biscuits down you don't have to worry about spacing them out too much because they don't spread because again it's a, a low oven and you lay them out here and you pop those into the oven for about 15 20 minutes keep an eye on them what they do is they get a slight bit kind of golden brown on the outside but they stay quite light and golden in the middle so we're going to pop these in the oven Check on our chips, our chips are looking super, super good. And by the magic of television, here are some cheesy cookies that we, were made, we prepared earlier. And they are lovely, they are light, they are crumbly. They're quite salty and cheesy, so they're quite filling. And they stay, if you have a kind of an airtight container, a tin or a, 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 a Pyrex dish with a lid, they last a couple of days in there. Um, and they really are a lovely, satisfying treat. These, like I said, are completely simple, straightforward recipes. You don't have to worry about weights and measures. It's just about trying to have a little bit of fun and try different things. Next time, we're actually going to move it up a notch and we're actually going to do four ingredient treats. We're going to do flapjacks, like basic flapjacks using porridge. And we're also going to do a really simple biscuit um, that because we use corn flour as well as flour, you can play and roll them out as many times as you like before you actually put them in the oven and they're still delicious and edible. We hope you've had a bit of fun with this. We hope you try it and um, go, go out there and enjoy it and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.